Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is Module 10, Time Series and Recurrent Neural Networks. This is Part 3, LSTM, Long Short-Term long short Memory with Keras. Now we're going to look at an actual example of LSTM. We're going to see two examples. The first example is just really, really simple. It's meant to show you what this recurrent type of neural network can do just in its most simple state and yet do something that a normal neural network would not be able to do. And then the next example will look like we'll look at an actual application where we look at time series data for sunspots. And we'll see how this type of recurrent neural network can predict something that is time series and be able to, at least in a very basic way, predict, predict sunspot activity. So this is showing you how to build a very simple TensorFlow through Keras LSTM neural network. I'm going to go ahead and run this. It takes it a moment to train, but it's not too bad. So it's running there. You can see that from the asterisk. This is showing the neural network how to predict something from time series. This time series is essentially almost think of it like a camera in front of a house like a, just a pinhole camera it sees a car driving by and it might see just a little bit of the paint color as the car is going by so the same position we're looking straight through we're seeing zero that means we're seeing nothing but then at the next time slice we see a car then at the next time slice again, we still see the car because it's, it's going in front of our pinhole that we're seeing. And now we see zero again for the rest of the sequence because basically the car has cleared our pinhole and has moved on its way. So these are sequences. Here a different colored car goes by, a, a two colored car, whatever two happens to be. Maybe, that's, maybe one's red, two's blue, something such as that. Ideally, if we wanted to make this more advanced, we would probably have three inputs and we would make this some sort of RGB for each and every single one of these. But we're dealing with a very, very simple example. I have these training set elements and I'm setting the Y up so that the Y, in this case, it's saying, hey, a one colored car went by. The second one is a two colored car then a three colored car. Then we have an example of a two colored car again, and that's two, and another example of three, and one. It's teaching the neural network that no matter where at in that sequence it is at, you, it's still that color car. It just, this one car, it, it barely made it into our time slice because it, it showed up later than these other ones but it's still a one colored car. It's the same as this car up here that occurred very early. So what we do next is we, we take all of these elements and we're going to train it. Now, by the way, we could represent, since there's just one input, we could represent this as an old school neural network. We would have one, two, three, four, five, six. We would have six inputs, but the problem is the one, and we would have to get rid of all these, we would, if we wanted to do that, we would basically get rid of all these, whoops, not get rid of the number, but we would get rid of all these square inputs, all these square brackets, and we would make them all look like that, and it would just be classic inputs. We don't want to do that. We're treating these as sequences. But even if they were classic inputs, these were all in, these were all, this would be input one, input two, input three. If you move something that was on input one to input three, that's a whole different pattern recognition to the neural network. You can't just flexibly move these ones to way over here and have it still recognize it in classic neural networks. In LSTMs, you absolutely can. So this neural network is trained and we have the output here and you see the results from training. We trained it for 200 epochs. That ran for a little while, not too bad. It was running in the background while I was explaining things. And there we, we have it. 
So now for this neural network, I have this code down here and I can try examples on it. Now, let me, this code is meant that I can just modify it in any way that I want to. So this is a live demo. I don't know exactly what it's going to produce. I hope it's going to produce something that makes it look smart. That's the idea. So this is two. So this is a two colored car that happened to be going through here. I can run it and I hope it will say two, which it does. If that two colored car occurred here, got rid of an extra brace that I didn't want to, it should still say two or not if I forgot a comma. Okay, my computer was not in insert mode anymore, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, there it does, it does happen to uh, confuse it if you get near the beginning. So that's two. As this two, so if we moved it more over there, it should still see it as a two. If we make it longer, that could mean it's a longer car, or it could mean that it was a slower moving car. Uh, it still should say two. If we switch this all over to ones, it should recognize that this is a one colored car, which it does. If, I don't know, this is a one colored car with a little bit of red, uh, two color paint in it, maybe, maybe one is blue, two is red. See what it does there. I have no idea what it'll do there. Oh, it recognizes it as a, as a two car, but at least it doesn't recognize it as say a three or something such as that. So this is learning sequence. You can see in just a very, very simple, simple example that it learns to recognize these, these patterns. And it can even be very short and it recognizes it. So that's the power of an LSTM. It recognizes these, these patterns really sort of over time. Next, we're gonna look at Sunspot's example. Now you can get daily Sunspot data files from this website. I have them loaded onto my instance, but you would have to download these if you want to run this particular example. So let's go ahead and read this in. This shows you basically the year, and it goes back pretty far. So 1818, first month, first day, it gives you, um, and by the way, this value is just a way of encoding the date and the year. Um, it gives you the sunspot value, negative one means that we don't have it, and the, um, the observation number, the num number of observations. So there's quite a bit of missing data near the beginning of the file. If we run it and we trim the rows that have missing observations, we have 11,000 and something. And we can also just take the, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the training set of everything before the year 2000, we're going to take the test set that we're going to evaluate it on as everything after 2000. And we create a training set for each of these. So we create a set of um, pandas for the training, one for the test, for the sunspot value, that's what we're trying to predict, the actual sunspot count. And we print out the number of observations of each that we have. So the training data are definitely bigger. You have nearly 55, you have over 55,000. The test set has a little over 6,000 values. Now what we've got to do is convert this into sequences. And this is the, this is perhaps the somewhat tricky part of this. So this takes that sunspot data like we had and converts it into a cube like we're going to use to train the LSTM with. To do this, what we do is we have to use this two sequences function. So this gives you the sequence size and then the observations. So the sequence size is going to be what we define the sequence size to be, so it's going to be 10. 
you take the data and you chop out 10 observations, then you move forward a little bit, chop out the next 10, the next 10, it's a sliding window across, and it builds all those rows of the, of the cube, but with the observations on back. So here we have the, we have it converted into that sequence. So we take the window by getting the observations from one up to one plus the, up to i plus the sequence size. We're looping over the entire range of observations, so whatever the length of observations is, up to minus the sequence size so that we stop while we still have enough to build out an entire sequence. And we essentially build, build this up. If we looked at what this really looked like, X train, I print out the shape of them up here. The shape of them, so it's got 55,000 rows. It's got the 10, which is the sequence but it's only got the one column because it's just the value that we're trying to predict over time, the number of sunspots. If we just print out X-Train, this is kind of what it looks like. You're seeing the individual sunspot values going across. It's a three-dimensional um, data structure. So you have the 255, 255 up to here. That's one row and you have all of the sunspot values, the 10 of them across. There's not enough to display 10, so that's why you've got the, uh, the three dots. Now we are going to try to build the model and fit it. When we run this, it's going to train it for a thousand epochs. And that takes a little bit of time. We do have an early stopping going on, so it's not going to take that, it's not really going to take that full amount of time. This is potentially something that a GPU instance would, um, would train a lot faster, but we, we will see that example, we'll see an example of that on the last class when we use when we do high performance computing and we make use of a GPU instance among, among other things. So we've got 6,131 samples that we're training on. We, result, we report the validation loss. Notice it's quickly dropping. After we let it go a while, it won't hit the entire 1,000. It will, it will stop. But I'll let this run on time lapse here real quick. All right, early stopping has kicked in. You can see that that kicked in after 16 epochs, and we now have the neural network trained and ready to go. And we can see what the RMSC. So it's predicting about plus or minus 22 sunspots, and you can that gives you an idea of the overall accuracy. It's not a particularly advanced network, but it does show how you represent the data going in. Breaking up into those sequences with the uh, with the two sequences function that I gave you is definitely the key part of of doing that. All right, this is the end of this module.